Hey, we're going to be talking today about lesser known causes and reasons for problems with your gut health. Let's talk about that. My name is Dr. Augustine from Head to Wellness. And in this episode, we definitely want to get into this because gut health is such a major, major problem today and it affects everything. So let's get into it. One of the ways how we can improve gut health is going to be getting regular sunlight exposure. So those of you who love the sun, great, you're going to love this even more. But for those that don't love the sun, here's a bit of information. If you can get 15 minutes in the morning, first morning sunshine, it has a different angle to the sun, and therefore your 15 minutes is not really going to burn you, so don't worry about that. Plus another good 10 to 15 minutes in maybe the afternoon sun, it's going to make things so much better because what it does it helps your serotonin production. Serotonin is that brain chemical that's the happy brain chemical. And we make 95% of our brain chemicals in our gut. So that definitely, the serotonin definitely plays a role in gut health as far as motility, moving your digestive tract really well, plus the gut bacteria, plus inflammation it helps with, plus the lining of your gut. So serotonin, good. Sun, getting some good, good, good sun is going to help that tremendously. So that'd be good if you could aim for about 15 to 20 minutes. Vitamin D is another secondary great effect that you get from that sun exposure. And gosh, vitamin D helps to reduce inflammation. It improves your immune system function. It increases that good gut bacteria that you want to help having good, healthy gut. Plus, it strengthens the intestinal lining. So you've heard of leaky gut. This is one of those things that you would love to have, plenty of vitamin D. And my recommendation for the level of vitamin D that you would really need is above 70. When you do your blood work, have your doctor check your vitamin D levels, and you want your level ideally 70 would be like optimal. So more sunlight exposure for you. Now, what if you can't get sunlight because it might be June gloom and you have all this gloomy clouds? Then you can get a full spectrum light bulb. Full spectrum light bulb, maybe you can put some of those into your bathroom so that when you get ready in the morning and you might spend time there getting ready, you can have pretty good full body sun exposure. Good idea. Second, spend more time in nature. Now, this is one of those things that I absolutely love to do. I did a video on it, called, and, the, and the thing that's called, this is the, the science behind it, it's called forest bathing. Here's what I know for certain, and I've known this for years because I've been always, I go up in the mountains every weekend, and I do an overnight, I backpack up in the mountains, sleep in a tent and all of that, and I spend time in nature, and it just restores me for the week. So spending time in nature is such a big deal, but guess what? It's also, in studies, it's also really great for your gut health. Guess why? It reduces stress. Now, let me talk about that for a second. Reducing stress. Now, part of stress is the special side of your brain called the autonomic nervous system. There's two parts. There's the fight or flight side, which is the stress side. Increases heart rate, increases blood pressure, and it jumps into gear when you have stress. However, parasympathetic is what we want. We want more of parasympathetic because 27 years of doing some special testing called heart rate variability, I've discovered people have, that have health issues have low parasympathetic, the rest and digest side. Decreased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, really healthy if we can get that side up. And most people spend time in this sympathetic fight or flight side all the time. So when you go into nature, it shifts you into that parasympathetic side, which is way healthier for you. So spending time in nature plus grounding, getting that exposure. If you can be by waterfalls, it's even better. It does. It will make you feel better, I guarantee you. You try this and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and how what your experience was. Another reason, another great thing to do for your gut health that's not spoken about much is massaging your belly. So your belly button, find that and you want to massage around that. You can massage three to four inches around that and you want to massage in a uh, counterclockwise direction. And the reason for that 
is as your stomach dumps into your small intestine, your food, digested food, hopefully, because you have no stress, right? Goes through your small intestine, then it start, then it moves towards the right side of you, which dumps, you've, you've, you know where the appendix is at. That's that right lower quadrant. So if you massage in a circular fashion from the right up and around towards your left side in that direction, it's going to help you move your food through better and you, your gut will feel better. It's interesting, just below your right rib cage is your gallbladder, just below and kind of up under your rib cage. So you can also help to massage that a little bit, and if you have any um, problems with your gallbladder, it'll help that as well. So massaging your belly, good thing. Another great thing would be to drink some ginger tea. Some people are not really big fans of ginger, but it really does help your digestive tract function better. It's been a natural remedy for gosh nausea and indigestion and constipation even for probably thousands of years even. Helps to improve your gut health. It reduces inflammation, helps you to produce better good probiotic bacteria in your gut. And some people will drink it in a hot form or some people will do it cold. So g drinking ginger tea helps digestive work, the digestive tract work so much better. Now, this is controversial, and I really don't care because it really is amazing. Eating a carnivore diet. Now, the carnivore diet, I've spoken about this a lot. I'm going to continue to speak about this because this has been such a game changer for a person's health and wellness. It is amazing. It's eating only animal protein and animal fat. So there are several aspects to this, why this is such a superior thing. So there's a thing that's called plant toxins. Search it out on Google. Type in vegetable plant toxins. You're going to see a major list from the World Health Organization, and we'll talk about a few of them. I'm going to do another video on these plant toxins in just a bit. Plant toxins, oxalates, phthalates, tannins, saponins, lectins, a bunch of things that cause gut inflammation. So if you switch to a carnivore diet, you're completely removing all of those plant toxins, hence less inflammation. Matter of fact, it's very anti-inflammatory. And as a matter of fact, I'll give you a good example. I've been doing this carnivore diet for probably eight months now. And before that, I was doing a ketogenic diet. And I would notice that I would still dig deeply into my gut after having some food and notice that it would be still tender and inflamed. So that tenderness implies inflammation. Now there is no tenderness whatsoever, no inflammation whatsoever in my gut. And I have no digestive problems whatsoever from switching to the carnivore diet. It's been a phenomenal thing. So that's just a little snippet about the carnivore diet. I could go on and I'm going to do another video on carnivore, so we'll talk about it. Another great thing to do for your gut is to take a probiotic supplement. Now, you definitely want to spend money on a good probiotic supplement. If you'd like more information on what is a good one, let me know. I'd love to help you out with that. Here's the thing. Look at the bottle of probiotics. First off, you do not want anything that's in a liquid form because liquids destroy probiotic bacteria. But on the bottle, on the label, and we'll use a classic and super common form of probiotic. It's called lactobacillus acidophilus. Right next to it, it should have in parenthesis a substrain marker. The substrain marker should be like IL-45, for instance. If there's no substrain marker on the label, then this probiotic that says lactobacillus acidophilus might be good for culturing cheese, but it doesn't help your body. It doesn't help your health. So pay the price. All probiotic company, all companies who have purchased probiotics to use under their label all get from the same source, and it's just how much they want to spend because there are probiotics that are resistant to liquids, resistance to di digestive enzymes. Um, they will last longer in the gut. They're also resistant to pH, to uh, heat and temperature. So the stronger the probiotic, and classically the strain of it really does make a difference the better it is but also the more price it's going to be worth spending extra money on a good probiotic for you so good get a good probiotic 
Now, another thing is to avoid, avoid sugar alcohols. So because most of America is very, very addicted to sugar, and the only sugar substitute that you should use, there are two, would be stevia and monk fruit, two great sugar substitutes that don't, do, don't have any problems, doesn't cause any problems within your health. Splenda, yes, Splenda will destroy your gut bacteria. But also, sugar alcohols will create bloating and indigestion and even diarrhea and gas. So sugar alcohols like erythritol or xylitol, not so good. And people, th those will also be in gums, like you know, chewing gum, you know, to freshen your breath, as well as mints that you would throw in to freshen your breath. I would try to avoid them. Good thing to do, avoid sugar alcohols. Lastly, listen to your gut. Pay attention to how your body feels. And what I mean by this is if you really wanna know if you have any inflammation going on in your gut, despite the obvious indigestion and bloating and gas that you may have, those are great indicators of gut problems. So paying attention to that. Now, those are very common, but they're not normal, those symptoms. Another thing though is have eat a meal wait an hour or two hours so that gets down that food gets down into your small intestine large intestine and then dig deeply into your gut and maybe you would push in if you can take from your belly button go out about two to three inches and go all the way around your belly button push deeply in there to see if you have any tenderness and if you do most likely whatever you just ate caused you some inflammation great great thing to do if you want to start to progress in this process of trying to restore your gut health. And I will tell you, I will tell you, a massive and major, major thing to do would be to switch your diet to do more of a carnivore diet. That'd be eggs and bacon in the morning, or eggs and sausage, and lunch can be a carnivore muffin. There's a great recipe online for carnivore muffins. Look them up. Great lady, I think she's called the Carnivore MD. Amazing, I, I had two or three of those for lunch. It's super yummy and super good. Um, and then dinner's gonna be a steak. There's, you can have a, a burger without, of course, the bun, and without, of course, the lettuce, because lettuce will create inflammation in your gut. But if you start this and try it for a week, anybody can do something for a week, and notice how your gut feels. Notice how your digestion will feel. Carnivore diet, highly recommend it. Great, great things to do. So I hope this helps. If you need any help, please let me know. I'd love to help you out. Comments, questions, I'm on email, draugustine at gmail.com. That's one way that you can get a hold of me. Also, you can call my office. It's 562-860-3404. I'm also on social media, TikTok, YouTube, as well as Instagram. So you can get a hold of me there in my, um, what do you want to call it? My channel name is Dr. Jim Cares, Dr. Jim Cares. You can find me there. I'm also doing podcasts. I'm on Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Love to uh, uh, have you join me there with subscription. Subscribe to me and uh, give me some likes on these videos. That'd be great. Again, my name is Dr. Augustine from Head to Wellness. I hope this information helps. Have a great day.